Alrighty guys, we're back. In the last video, we saw how we could create a new repository, clone that repository down to our local machine, do some work by creating a branch and then committing a few changes into that branch. And if you haven't watched that video, I really recommend you go back and review it because uh, you're going to need to know that stuff. You're going to be using it over and over again. But now we're on to the point where I actually want to take those changes and commit them up into the online repository. And then, you know, basic, basically that is you submitting this stuff so that I, uh, Professor Timbot, can take a look at it and help you out with any problems that you may be having. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take those local changes, push them to the remote repository, and then follow the correct procedure for merging that into the master branch, right? So the idea is that you do all your work inside of these sub branches and then when everything is good you merge it into the master and there's a couple of steps to doing that so let's kind of walk through it so first off i'm going to bring up my code editor here and i'm going to make, make a little change on this so uh, let's say so before i get started with that i need to know what branch am i working in here because what i don't want to do is work direct directly inside of the master branch that's a no-no you should consider the master branch to be like your live version of this thing this is what users are going to be seeing so instead i'm going to bring up my uh my little git tool here i'm using git bash and you can see like from the previous video i'm still inside the same path i'm in my code projects my humber student and this is my second test and i'm in my cpan 202 folder and you can see from the blue indication here that i'm already inside of week one so test your memory if i want to switch between branches here how do i do it let's say i want to take a look at the master so i'm going to say git checkout master and it's really as simple as that when i do watch what happens in my code editor right see how that changed uh, because basically the git client has now uh, taken a look at what it has stored as uh, the code version for the master branch and basically rewrites everything on my local drive here so if i go back again git checkout week one I don't have to create the branch again because I already created it so now I'm just checking it out and now I am back to the week one version of all the code pretty cool right now a handy little tip that you can do is when you start work in case you're working with a team it is always good to make sure that you've got the latest version of the code and to do that you can do what's called a pull operation. So I'm going to do a quick git pull here. Now I know nobody else is working inside this repository right now, but it's good to get in the habit of refreshing your code from the repo so that uh, if you are working with a team, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to incorporate any changes they have done as you go along. Now, other members of that team would need to also be working inside the week one branch in order for me to do a git pull to get the changes that they have done but here's what it would look like i would simply say git pull origin week one now it's going to tell me you know that i'm already up to date because basically nobody else is working in this repo except for myself but it's going to be a lot easier for me if I just regularly incorporate changes that other people have been committing into the repository. Uh, if later on I have to do that, it's going to be a lot, lot harder, right? So always do a git pull when you start work. There's no harm in doing that. All right, so now uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to make a little change here so we can illustrate how do we get these changes actually committed into the remote repository and then how do we roll them into the master branch so i'm going to change up this bio uh, i'm going to say i have been a programmer since the days of the commodore vic 20 and my first computer was the timex 
Sinclair 1000. I like that. I give it a save. And now let's do a quick little bit of review here. What is the process? I have made a change here. So if I want to see what those changes are, I can do a git status right here. And it tells me that the readme file in my week one folder has changed. I like those changes. So I'm going to say git add week one readme, right? That is me, you know, taking this change and rolling it into my little cache here, my staging. Um, once I've uh, completed everything and I'm happy with it, I'm going to say git commit. And this allows me to add a little message to my commit. And I'm going to say updated the bio first sentence, just like that. There we go. And so now the change has been both added and committed inside my week one branch. And if I do a git status again, well, it's going to come up with nothing because basically I've, I've stashed those changes. Uh, but that's on my local machine. That's not on the remote machine yet. So to push it to the remote machine, fairly straightforward. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to say git push origin and then the branch that I want to push this into. So I'm going to say week one. Now I already pushed this before I started making uh, before I started making the video. So it's basically just going to put it up in the branch there. But if it's your first time pushing this uh, new branch up into the remote repo, it's going to give you a little message that it's actually creating the branch on the remote repo for you. Let's see. So that is basically talking to the Git server at the remote URL, which is in this case is oddlylabs.com. And you can see that it has now pushed a change into the week one. And you can actually see that. So if I go back to the, uh, back to the Git server right here, um, and I refresh my dashboard here, we're going to see another entry inside of my feed of activities here. And there it is. It says Timbot pushed uh, to week one into the CPAN 202 repository. And it actually even uh, gives me a little link here. And if I click on that, it shows me a code difference. So it shows what has changed. That's pretty cool, right? So it shows you very, very specifically exactly what you have been doing every step of the way through your project. Super, super useful information. Now, as you get more sophisticated with Git, you will f you'll find that there are ways to actually roll back these changes. Let's say you made a bunch of changes and they didn't work out for you. You can actually go back to earlier versions. There's tons of cool stuff like that that you can do. We won't we, we won't need all of that stuff uh, for the sake of our course here. You're essentially going to be focusing on pushes and pulls and creating branches. Okay, so we take a little pause here. And if we look at the repo, uh, first off, I'll show you that there's a little drop down here. Um, so if I flip over to my week one branch, you can see I've now got my subfolder in here. And when I click into it, there's the biography that I've been working on. And this all looks pretty good. All right. Now, what we've mentioned is that you work inside branches, but eventually you want to merge those into the master. And that is where a collaboration tool like GitHub, or in this case, GOGS, comes in. Because they have something called a pull request right here. Let's take a look at that. The pull request is used to do a review of the changes that you have made. And if the review passes, roll those changes into the master branch. And then that is you basically uh, you know, committing code into the live version of this thing that you are creating. So I'm going to show you how to make a pull request. I'm going to make this pull request. I'm going to assign it to myself because I'm the only person working on this. Now that may seem a little bit redundant, but again, it's a matter of getting into good practices here because when you get working on a team, you're definitely going to need to know how to do pull requests, how to do reviews, how to merge things into the master. And if you don't know that, it can be pretty overwhelming when you get into any kind of new development situation. 
So let's walk through it. I'm going to create a new pull request. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So here's my new pull request. And you can see that we've got two drop downs here. The first one, which is automatically set to master, this is called the base. Uh, this is the branch that we want our code to eventually be merged into, right? So this is the one receiving the code changes here. And you can see that it's automatically set to master because typically that is what you're going to do. If you get into bigger projects, you may find yourself merging branches into branches as well. And you, you can totally do that using the pull request system here. So the second one, which is the comparison branch, this is the one you're typically going to be changing. Now, I only have one other branch. I've got this one called week one right here. And so if I click on that, I'm basically saying compare week one to the master branch and any changes that you find in week one, we're going to merge into the master. So they're actually going to get physically copied right over into the master branch here. Now, here's our documentation. So first off, I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this my updating bio information pull request here. I'm going to put a little description in here. I'm going to say, this is a nice test of doing a pull request just for demo purposes. There we go. And you can even uh, upload files associated with it. Like if you had an image, uh, let's say you were working on a graphic user interface or something like that, you could upload an image that you want to associate with this pull request just to make the documentation a little bit more clear. Uh, once you're ready to go here, you're going to click on an assignee and you're going to add somebody. Now, I'm the only person working on this project in my student account. So I'm going to click on that to assign it to myself. And I'm going to create the pull request. All right. Now, if you're working in a team, you would get an email saying that you've got something to review. And um, you need to take a look at this code and decide whether it's OK or not. The automation tool does some really nice work for you here. You can see right here in green. It's saying that this pull request can be merged automatically. What that means is that all the changes that I'm making don't really create any kind of code conflicts in the master branch. So the automation has looked through it and said, you know what? This is good to go. If you are ready, you can go ahead and merge this in. And most of the merges you do are going to look like that. They're, they're, you'll be able to automatically merge them. Now, if you come across a case where you can't automatically merge it. We'll show you how you can do a code difference, which is basically you going in, looking at the code, and indicating to the system what parts of the code you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. That's called a code conflict. Uh, typically, we're not going to come across these in this course, but if it comes up, we can deal with it. So I'm going to go ahead and merge this in. So this is me saying, take everything from the week one branch that is different and merge it into the master branch. And then it's basically live. So let me put a little comment down in here. I'm going to say reviewed, no conflicts, ready for merge. Now you're typically going to be a little more descriptive than that, but this is just a nice little demo we're doing here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and merge the pull request right here. There we are. Uh, so that succeeded. That is done. And it's ask, asking me if I want to delete the branch. Now, you, I might as well delete the branch because when I delete it, it's only going to get rid of it here on the remote repository. On my local system that I'm working in, I'll still have that branch. So if I want to make continued changes inside of my week one branch here, not a problem at all. I can totally do it. And then the next time I do a push from week one, it would simply recreate the branch on the remote repository here. So my suggestion would be like just to keep things tidy, after you've done a merge, go ahead and delete that branch. There's very rarely a reason not to do that. So I'm going to delete that. And then if we go right back up to the root of the repository here, 
um, we can see that our master branch has now been updated. It's got a week one folder. And if I click into that, well, there's my revised biography. Isn't that cool? This is super, super useful software here. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is because I deleted that branch, it's no longer available inside the drop down here. And typically you are going to want to delete that branch and just keep it clean with the master here. Uh, all of your activities, they're still preserved here. If, uh, if, we go, if I go back to my dashboard, you can see like even though I've deleted the branch, all of that activity is still recorded inside of here. And, um, you know, it, I, I can still show that I've been doing my work here, basically, which is obviously really important. Okay, um, so a couple of, couple of little style points and notes there. Um, when you're working inside your branch, you want to do your commits pretty often. Right. Don't wait, like don't let days and days go by before you push your changes up into the remote repository. If you want, you can keep the branch around. You don't have to do your pull request until you are very comfortable with the code. Like basically when you do a pull request, that's you saying, hey, somebody take a look at this code. And if it's all good, I'd like to commit it into the live version of this project. That's typically going to go to somebody like a technical director or a manager or a QA person who is essentially going to clone your code, test it, run it through its paces, make sure there's no problems. Now, if there is a problem, they're typically going to go back to that pull request and put a note on there and say, hey, you know, I found this thing. You need to take a look in it. And so essentially the pull request doesn't get merged until QA has been finished. So this is a very, very typical workflow we've been looking at that you would find in any modern development environment. And I really want you guys to, to test this out. Um, you know, watch the videos, just follow it through step by step. And let's see if you can get your week one bio that you've created uh, in the form of a markdown file in a week one folder in your repository. Now, if you run into any issues, don't forget we've got a discussion board on Blackboard, and you can jump on there and ask me any kind of a question. That is probably a better way to go than sending an email. If you send an email, I, I will get back to you on it. Um, but with, if you do it via the discussion board, well, you know, we can disseminate that information out to everybody in the class, and we'll all learn a little bit better together. If you've got suggestions about uh, videos you'd like to see, or uh, other things that you want to know. Um, I'm certainly happy to take suggestions for that. Uh, the next thing that I think I probably want to show you is how to take your repository and make it private. Um, we need to take a look at how to hook up authentication on your repository so that no, uh, you, you'll have better control of who can see your code and who can edit your code. Uh, that's something that, again, that you're really going to need to know if you work inside of any collaborative develop, development environment. So this is pretty fun. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll proceed along to, uh, I'm going to do another video um, that will get into the XML stuff and basically show you how to structure your XML document. We've got that assignment where we are modeling a menu for a restaurant. That's pretty awesome. I can show you how we do that. Also, how we use something like a DTD for validation. We can take a look at XML schemas and how those are used to provide a little bit more sophisticated validation on documents. And we can compare those to JSON and take a look at what the differences are between XML and JSON and why JSON has kind of taken over in terms of uh, online web services um, and compare that to where we do find XML in regular use today. So this is all coming up and uh, keep an eye on the materials on Blackboard. Keep an eye on oddlylabs.com and you can follow along as I make uh, updates to each of the um, weeks inside of the repository. Look forward to working with you guys. That's it. I'm signing out for the moment. Hit me with any questions.